we have to check whether a given matrix is a sparse matrix or not. What is a sparse matrix? Sparse matrix, first, if this is an input matrix, let us uh, calculate how many zeros are there. This is a 3 by 3 matrix. So, M is 3 here, N is 3 here. If we say M cross N matrix is this one. This is uh, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we have 5 zeros here. How many elements are there in this matrix? 3 into 3, that is 9. And just divide it by 2 because this is an integer. It is going to give you 4.5, so that will be 4. So, 5 is greater than 4. So, if this number of zeros is greater than m cross n divided by 2, then we say it is a sparse matrix. Now, let us come to this one. How many zeros are there? 1, 2, 2. They are this m into n by 2. So, we have n 9 by 2. Integer will take 4. So, 2 is greater than 4? No. 2 is less than 4. So, this is not a sparse matrix. So, if you are doing it in C, then you have to include hash include I use this stdio.h, conio.h. If you are doing it in C++, IO stream and then using namespace std, whatever your compiler requires. So, this is our driver function. We have a main function which is which we have initialized and array which is a double dimensional array. Now, you can ask uh, with using for, for loop twice, i and j variable, you can input the values also from the user and you can show it also. So, let us say our matrix is 3 by 3 and you can accept it by the user also using this C in how many rows, how many columns like this. So, we assume that we have 3 rows and 3 columns because this, this is an example program. You can do it by yourself. You can manipulate it by yourself. Now, we have if. Now, this is a function is sparse. Since it is this function is inside if, Either it is going to return true, that is 1, or false, that is 0. So, this is sparse, this function is here. We are passing the array, we are passing the number of rows and columns. So, this function is of importance. Array, then we have M and N. And you know, whenever we initialize and declare a matrix, and if you are putting the values here, then we don't need to give the number of rows, only columns have to be given. You can initialize the column, column numbers. It, it depends on you, but it will take the value of 3 only when you uh, don't give anything here because it is, of course, 3 by 3. So, now here we will have we will have a counter, counter equal to 0. This counter is basically to count how many zeros are there in the matrix. So, we will use a for loop twice. We know that for, an, for a double dimensional array or a matrix, the i is for the rows. So, first we fix the i, then this j is for the column values, then again i, j for the column, column values. So, for that we have a for, for row and then column. Now, here we are checking if array ij, that is the value of the array, that is these values, if it is equal to 0 or not. So, if this is 0, we will increase the counter, otherwise not. So, finally, when this, this code snippet is over, the counter will tell you how many zeros are there. Now, we will check, as I just said, that counter set, let us take this example. How many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 will come. And what is M, in, M and N here? 3 into 3. And that is That will be 4.5. That will be 4 because this is an integer. This is the M and N are integer. So, you get 4, uh, 4. So, 5 is greater than 4. So, this is going to return true. So, true will come here. That is 1 will come here. You will print yes. You can also print this matrix is a sparse matrix. Otherwise, if it, if it is uh, return, say, I make it as 10 or make it as 20. Now, there will be only 1, 2, 3 zeros. So, 3 is not greater than 4. So, a false will return and this will be printed, else will be printed. This is how the sparse matrix can be checked.